In this new segment of Advisor Revelations, the DPL team will discuss how to evaluate new solutions and address current challenges and the strategies that can help you grow your firm and AUM. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Advisor Revelations podcast. I'll be your host today, Tim Rambowski, Vice President of Member Success. Before we get started today, make sure you hop out to the website, though, and uh, subscribe for the future Advisor Revelation podcast. We'll be coming out where we'll cover a number of topics. And anything that we talk about today, anything piques your interest, you can also hop out to our website, to the Contact Us page, and schedule a time with a consultant. So anything that pops up with interest, feel free to go out and schedule. But we're super excited today. We recently announced the ability of our insurance desk, and I'm happy to uh, have on the podcast with me. Amy Arnett, who's actually our director that's working on that insurance desk. Welcome uh, to the show, Amy. Thanks, Tim. I appreciate it. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. No, we're, we're happy you're here. And just to give everyone, you know, some context, right? So DPL, you know, for a long time, we were uh, terrific for annuity options. If annuities were something that you're interested in, you'd come to us. And consistently, though, our members were saying, hey, can you help us with insurance? And by insurance, I mean like life insurance, long-term care disability, all that good stuff. And uh, for a while, we didn't have a great resource. But being a membership organization, the great thing is you get tons of feedback. And based on that feedback, we decided to launch our insurance desk that is basically a a best-in-class approach for our advisors. So Amy, why don't you tell us a little bit about kind of your role at DPL and kind of some of your background and kind of how all this came about? Sure, absolutely. Well, number one, I've been in the insurance field for 37 years this year, and I have always worked with the independent advisor or agent in helping fulfill that need for insurance for their clients. And it's always been a client advisor relationship that I have supported. I started working with DPL actually about four years ago as an outside consultant, specifically for disability income. And it gradually moved into also life insurance and long-term care. So when you needed that resource, you know, you reached out to me and I was able to fulfill it. And then, of course, last year, we now, I can say we, but DPL wanted to have this in-house. And so I've come on to help support all of those insurance needs in all of the areas of life, long-term care, and disability. So, you know, we have a full-fledged insurance desk to help our advisors and to fulfill that need for their clients. Yeah. And I think one of the biggest things is, you know, advisors come to us because they're not licensed to do this and they don't want to do the applications, the underwriting, all the complexities that come with that. So, you know, in your role, right, we just talk about how we handle all the licensing and the shopping and the underwriting, just kind of what, what all services does this insurance desk take off the plate of the advisor? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, in order to do insurance, you have to have an insurance license, right? And most of our advisors are not licensed. So DPL holds that license and the advisor can bring a, a client to us or a situation to us and we will go out and market and shop for whatever that need might be, whatever form of insurance it might be. We put a package together of several choices because, again, we're looking for best in class. So we bring a package of several choices back to the advisor and can sit down and review it with the advisor. We can sit down and review it with the advisor and the client, or we can be completely client facing and review it with the client. Once a decision is made, We take care of the application process. We follow it through underwriting. We communicate with the client on any medical concerns or any additional information is needed. We don't bother the advisor with that. And we see it all the way through until the policy is placed in force and keeping the advisor attached as that advisor in our system. So if any information is needed in regards to the file or the policy, you know, all the advisor has to do is reach out to us. But in essence, we're that whole backroom support system on any insurance need that might arise. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, an advisor is doing a financial plan for a client, right? They're doing a needs analysis. They see, okay, we need term to cover a, you know, income gap. We need disability. Maybe there's an estate plan case or a special needs child. We need permanent life insurance. So Amy, it sounds like kind of your team, what you can do is take that need all the way into fruition, right? And it sounds like you will do most of the handholding for it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And a lot of times I'll have a phone call with the advisor and we'll talk about the case ahead of time just so that I have a better understanding of exactly what we're trying to accomplish. 
And once I have that, then it's smooth sailing from there. I mean, it really is a smooth process that I feel like a lot of advisors have been happy with so far. And I know that they're thrilled that we have an insurance desk because rather than having to send them down the street to a a competitive office and possibly lose AUM, they can retain that client within them because as far as the client's concerned, that advisor is still attached to that service. Yeah. That's one thing we hear from advisors all the time is they, um, market themselves as, you know, comprehensive wealth managers, comprehensive financial planners, and definitely on the investment side, they have the ability to not only do the planning, but the implementation with the annuities was definitely where they could do the advising and the implementation through DPL. But what always seemed like the missing piece was the insurance piece, right? They did the planning, but when it came down to implementation, it's kind of like, Well, do you have, uh, you know, an advisor you already work with? Do you have an insurance agent the client knew? It's kind of a clunky experience. So I know a lot of times when I would talk to an advisors, they would hesitate really to want to get into insurance because they knew that if a recommendation was to buy it, they didn't have a great option. And I think Mm -hmm. what Amy just mentioned is the horror story that I hear all the time from advisors is, hey, I recommended the client to buy a term. They had a college friend that works at Northwestern Mutual. And they came back with an adjustable comp life, whole life policy that they did need. You know, they were oversold, overpitched. And I think that's one of the things that, Amy, your team is you fill the prescription. You don't try to rewrite it and upsell it. This isn't like, hey, how can we generate a higher you know, payment to us? It's you fulfill what's needed, right? Oh, absolutely. That's exactly right. And that's why it's important that we have a conversation with the advisor first, because I want to understand what the advisor is recommending so that when we go out and bring back some choices, it's in line with what that advisor is looking for. And it's funny that you say something about when the advisor makes the recommendation, what happens to that recommendation when it's insurance? I was just talking with an advisor yesterday, explaining our process to him. And his comment was, yeah, I could sit down and make a recommendation for insurance. But then the client would say, well, well, how do I get that insurance? And the advisor's like, well, you got to go down the street. And he's thrilled now that he doesn't have to send them down the street. All he has to do is connect them with DPL and we can fulfill that need. Yeah, it really helps advisors to consolidate relationships. I saw some Cerulli data the other day. It was very interesting. The average client in accumulation, they have three advisors they work with. Now, typically that's, you know, their financial planner, you know, their insurance agent, and then probably like a 401k advisor, somebody kind of on that side of the house. But when they move into retirement, they actually consolidate into one, right? So one of the nice things is it sounds like through this desk, you know, you can actually get rid of the insurance agent right away because the client can consolidate now into, you know, almost one relationship during accumulation. That way you're also the advisor during retirement. So it really seems like this is a way to kind of keep the the fox out of the in-house, you know, keeping all those insurance agents at arm's length during kind of those fragile years when clients are looking around. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree. And you know, it, There's some good insurance agents out there that make good recommendations, but you also see a lot of insurance agents that are making the sale for the commission and they're not really doing the proper planning. So I feel like with DPL and the advisors that are doing the proper planning, you know, we make a good marriage because we're going to fulfill what that advisor has discovered and what the need is. And we're not going to try to go beyond that. We'll have a conversation if we think of something as an alternative, but that's what the advisor So the plan's made holistic in that situation. Yeah. I don't think I've ever met an insurance agent that loved term insurance. (laughs) They always think the answer to like whole life is the answer to everything, right? And uh, we all know that's definitely not the case. And not just one policy, but two or three. (laughs) Exactly, right? Why get one commission when you get three or four? What other areas are you working with advisors? What are other needs that pop up where you've been able to help out? Yeah. So long-term care is another really big area of focus for us right now. It's gaining a whole lot of popularity. And what I'm finding is that advisors don't understand all the choices available today compared to what it was 30 years ago. So there's a whole lot of asset-based long-term care that looks much more attractive than a traditional long-term care. So long-term care is definitely an important part of the planning process that we're finding advisors are very interested in as well as long-term disability. You know, you've got young families that you're planning for and 
and they need income protection. And if they don't have that income protection, you know, they're going to access those assets under management from the advisor and blow up the whole retirement plan. So long-term disability is another item that is gaining popularity as well. Yeah. Once again, I saw a really data point the other day. I was looking at unsolicited client requests. So basically, when does the client come to an advisor and they ask about something, you know, that's the advisor is not, you know, practically probing about. And 75% of the respondents to the long-term care was one. So it sounds like it's something clients are interested in. And I can tell you from my experience working with advisors, it's like when that question pops up, they cringe. They're like, oh, yeah. you know, we're going to talk about long-term care again. And, you know, really in the past has been probably more so just bashing it and trying to get the client not to entertain it because mm -hmm. Super limited options or even think about like the mispricing that happened years ago where, you know, that was kind of the horror story people thought. I was like, oh, well, I buy long-term care insurance. Then my premium doubles and doubles and doubles. And then the carrier goes out of business, right? There's kind of that problem like 10 years ago where we saw all of that. But it seems like the world's changed a lot now. So instead of like cringing and trying to get talk the client out of it, it sounds like now maybe there's some new options that, you know, maybe should be embraced as opposed to you know, cringing when the client asks about it. Oh, absolutely. There is. I was actually on a call this morning with an advisor who was going to present a couple of options to their client. And that was his exact comment. It's like, I'm so thankful that you're all there. And I'm so thankful that you can handle long-term care because I haven't had support in that area. And it's something my client is asking about and we need to address. So, you know, they're super thankful that we're able to provide that education. Yeah. That's an area that's changed a lot. And, you know, long-term care is an interesting one just because it went from kind of the traditional type, you know, policies that were more like health insurance. Now, he's, like you mentioned, there's the asset base. We'll get too deep into those today, but there's always tons of questions there. So I definitely encourage you when listening, if you want to learn more about long-term care, we actually just did a long-term care webinar that you could uh, access on our website and, and listen to, as well as schedule a call to speak with Amy, because I'm sure if you're hearing about this, there's there's probably tons of questions you have just around asset base and whatnot, because that, that webinar, we had huge attendance and probably more questions than any webinar I've seen. So feel free to uh, schedule an appointment. Let's talk more about that. So what about, you know, we talked about life insurance, term insurance. We talked about long-term care. Is disability another one or what are some other ones that you're hearing about quite often from advisors? Yeah, long-term disability is definitely another avenue that we're covering. You know, a lot of individuals have employer-paid group disability. And what they're finding, though, is that it's not covering the need. It's creating a gap. So they'll come to us to do a review to see what that gap is and how we can fulfill it. You know, group disability is great because it's easy and it's cheap. But what a lot of individuals don't understand, and sometimes the advisor doesn't either, is that when it's an employer paid group plan, you know, it's taxable. So, you know, there's almost always a gap of coverage based upon income. So definitely disability is another area. You know, we've also gotten into a lot of estate planning here recently with second to die insurance. So whether it's for estate taxes, whether it's for a special needs child, you know, they create a special needs trust. They want to make sure that that child's taken care of beyond their lives because they're providing that care now, right, while they're alive. Mm -hmm. But what happens when mom and dad die? You know, that second to die is important for that special needs trust. And, or if it's just a family wanting to leave their kids something, you know, it's a way to provide that and still retain or use assets to live. And the insurance is for the kids to live beyond that. So it's another exciting thing to talk about. It's interesting you're talking about estate planning. I've noticed, and we've always knew this would happen, but it seems like islets are back in vogue again because the estate tax threshold, that tax bill looks like it's going to sunset here in the near future. And uh, all of a sudden, I probably haven't had a solve for estate taxes for a while. I mean, I guess... If you're lucky enough, you've always had to worry about estate taxes. But for those that are kind of in that, that middle ground now, and that's RAs, right? Well, RAs serve disproportionately higher net worth clientele. It sounds like, you know, are you hearing more and more about islets coming back into play with the estate tax built about the sunset here? Yeah, they absolutely are. And what we're finding right now is the advisor has done the review to try to determine if, you know, that estate tax is going to be a concern for that client. 
brings it over to us to kind of review, see what the possible options are and maybe what cost might be in order to help prepare for that estate tax, whether they're going to use self-insure or whether they want to use insurance to offset it. But it's definitely coming back into fruition. And you're right, I haven't heard a whole lot about islets up until, you know, this year it's becoming more popular. Yeah, that's helpful. So now you kind of know the product types. There's one probably elephant in the room we should get out of the way, and that's compensation. How does this work? Right. So, you know, I know a number of you listening, you've probably utilized or have looked into our annuity platform, which is super straightforward. They're all advisory products. You put your 1% fee against the cash value. It's super easy, super simplistic. And just to kind of give everyone some context, you know, the fee-based annuity market's huge. There's you know hundreds of products there. It's been around for 20 years and just growing and growing and getting larger, more carriers are developing and, and building those products. When we start looking though at insurance, we look at life, disability, long-term care, all those product types, you know, there really hasn't been a lot of advisory products built. So as you might have noticed in the beginning, we talked about best in class approach that we're looking at for these products. So just everyone's aware on the call, from time to time, a commission product might be the best in class based on the need. There's a limited selection of advisory products. So sometimes something you might need might only exist in the commission world. So just so everyone on the call is aware, you know, you as an advisor can work with DPL in this capacity and maintain your fee only fiduciary status. The way it operates is, you know, we're the writing agent. We do receive the commission. None of that's kicked back to the advisor or anything like that. It is still a fee relationship between you and your client. DPL takes the commission, but we satisfy that need that the client has. So just so everyone's aware, that's kind of how the compensation works. The exciting thing is by running this through us, though, there is a growing need for advisory solutions. So, I mean, maybe you can tell us a little bit from time to time. There's an advisory product that makes sense that an advisor can bill on, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we do. We have several products for choices in that area. And it's always something that if it's the right situation that I present. So I'll show the advisory product and I'll show a commission-based product just so that we can see how they compare. And really based upon what the client's needs are, makes the determination of which route to take. And just for everyone, I mean, DPL's mission is to get everything advisory. That's our mission. We want to, but first of all, we want to serve our advisors. And if we can't serve you with an advisory product, we'll we'll serve you with a commission product. But one thing that we do utilize is we utilize all the the solutions that we do to work with carriers to build more of these products. So we definitely encourage you to utilize DPL for this service because the more we can show that RAs have a need for these types of products and solutions, the more the carriers are going to listen and start building advisory products you know, that would be more designed for the client and, uh, you know, definitely more consumer benefit there when you take that commission out. But nonetheless, we're super excited to get this out there. As Amy mentioned, it's been a huge success. We've actually been shocked with how many advisors have utilized it pretty quickly. You know, almost surely Amy's building up a team to kind of support all of this. So if you haven't utilized the desk, we definitely encourage you to schedule a call with us and we can show you how that works. So, Amy, with that, thanks for joining us today. Absolutely. It was great, Tim. Anytime. I'd love to chat again sometime. Yeah, totally. And if you haven't already, make sure you go out to our website, subscribe to the podcast. We'll have additional podcasts such as these, and maybe we'll have Amy on for some more. We'll get in more detail about some things like long-term care and some of the products themselves. Hopefully, this was a good overview for you. And like I said, feel free to go to the Contact Us page. Schedule a time. You can talk to Amy directly about any needs that you might have. So thanks, everyone, for listening. Thanks for listening. To hear more advisor revelations, go to dplfp.com and subscribe on your favorite podcast streaming app.